Hello, and welcome to Dyslexia Devoted, the podcast dedicated to building awareness, understanding, and strategies to help those with dyslexia. I'm your host, Lisa Parnello, dyslexia therapist and founder of Parnello Education Services. Join me as we dive into today's episode of Dyslexia Devoted. Hello, friends, and welcome to another episode of Dyslexia Devoted. Have you ever wondered what books would be good to recommend to middle schoolers or maybe kids in that 5th through 8th grade range? Welcome to episode 56 of Dyslexia Devoted, and today I will be listing off a pile of books that I think middle schoolers will enjoy reading, and they are all either ones that I've read multiple times with students or ones that other students have told me are really great and enjoyable. So you can either keep track of the ones I'm listing off today, or if you go to parnelloeducation.com forward slash summer reading, I'm going to go ahead and list off the books I'm talking about today. And today's books are mostly for that fifth through eighth grade range. And so I think I might have to do another episode coming soon for some of those younger kid books. But for now, let's start with the middle school chapter books, because those are sometimes the ones that are harder to judge at a glance how good of a book those are going to be. And as an added bonus, if you stayed at the very end, I'm listing off a series of podcasts that are appropriate for kids to listen to this summer, as you guys might be going on some traveling adventures and might need to entertain some kids. Then you can download some podcasts before you hit the road for some summer adventures. Now, if you are a longtime listener, you might realize this episode is coming out a little later than normal. Typically, I post the episodes on Sunday evening, worst case, maybe Monday morning if my internet's being really slow. But this week, it's coming out a day or two later than normal because I just got back from a family reunion up in Washington, out on the coast, and I was greatly enjoying my time with family and relatives that I have not gotten to see in a very long time because our annual family reunion has not been very annual for obvious reasons in recent years. And I was already on a plane before the sun ever got up on Friday morning, which is normally when I record the podcast for you guys is on Friday mornings. But since I was already flying and driving to visit my family. That never happened, but I think it was well worth the trip. One of my favorite parts of the trip was actually getting to see all of my uncles hanging out together. And one of them actually grabbed my cell phone when he saw the Parnello Education logo and saw our family name for my business logo that he'd actually never seen before because I talked to my cousin more than my uncle. So he hadn't seen it yet like she had. And he got so excited seeing our family name on the Parnello Education logo. All right, as we start jumping in to the meat of our episode today with all of these fantastic books that I'm recommending to you, don't forget you can either write down the books as I list them, or I have created a resource for you at parnelloeducation.com forward slash summer reading, no spaces in there, and I will list off all of the books that I'm mentioning today on a Google Doc, and just like the last time I did a Google Doc for the summer activities, I'm doing it that way instead of a PDF that you can download so that I can keep adding to it as I think of more. So make sure you go ahead and check that out. So I'll put the link in the show description as well as the usual show notes page so that you can download the list of all of the books that I'm mentioning if any of them sound really great to you today. Okay, so the first book that I'm going to recommend is The Unteachables by Gordon Corman. I love Gordon Corman's books so much because they are so much fun. They have good vocabulary and great characters and the kids always enjoy them. In this book, it is about a class of misfit students, and it's supposed to be what they don't call it is a special education classroom with all these kids who have different learning challenges, and they are matched with this teacher who's burned out and been given a bad deal in the past and is not all that motivated of a teacher anymore. But when you combine this class of misfits with this misfit teacher, they accomplish something pretty amazing. The next book is called Flying Solo. And it's about a class that teaches themselves when their substitute never shows up. Somehow the message gets lost along the way, and the school has no idea that there isn't a teacher in their classroom. And the kids are all on their own and have to decide what they're going to do without a teacher and how long they can get away with it without letting anybody know that they don't have a teacher. Then the next up, I'll be perfectly honest, is not a book that I've read yet, but it is one that has had great reviews. I have found it on multiple recommended book lists for the middle school age group, and it's one that I am trying to find the right kid that it would be a good fit for. And that one is called The Miscalculations of Lightning Girl. And it's about a girl who gets struck by lightning and it gives her superpowers and giftedness. 
So she becomes extra intelligent after getting hit by lightning. Another book that I've had many students enjoy, especially ones who did not actually expect to enjoy it, is called Out of My Mind. It's about a girl with cerebral palsy who is incredibly smart, but nobody knows it because she can't talk. If you're not familiar with cerebral palsy, it's more of a physical condition, not a mental condition, but it can impact the way people think that somebody is able to produce work because of the way they cannot communicate verbally sometimes, depending on how severe of a condition it is. And in this case, this girl is super smart, but they keep treating her like she's a baby because she can't talk. And so it's about how she is able to overcome some of the challenges and learn how to communicate just how bright she really is. And then the other book that I have to recommend today is A Long Walk to Water. Now, A Long Walk to Water is a nonfiction story, and it is short, so it's not too long of a read, but boy, is it powerful. And it's about the true story of the struggles of two 11-year-olds in Sudan who have to walk a very long way to get water because there is no running water in their village, and then what happens when they become adults and how they try to make changes for the good. Now, if you need a really great story for a child who's clever enough to follow along with multiple perspectives, I love the book called A Tangle of Knots. It is absolutely fabulous, and it has all of these intertwined characters and a lot of foreshadowing where you can see what's coming, but only if you know to look for it. And one of the most fun things about this book is it actually has recipes hidden throughout the book. The short end of the story is that everybody has a special talent, except for some people who are fair, meaning they don't have any talent at all. And one of the characters, her talent is baking, and she's one of the main characters of the story. So as you make it through the story, in between chapters, there are recipes that you can actually make. I've made a couple of them before, and they're actually quite delicious. And whatever lucky kid reads this book gets to slowly find out how all of these characters are intertwined. And if they really like them, there is actually a second book that follows this one called A Clatter of Jars. So that is one that I absolutely love. Sometimes it goes a little better if they have an adult to follow along with them, or if it's a student who can pay attention to multiple perspectives at once. I know some kids hate it because it makes it really hard for them to understand what's happening, while other kids thrive on a good story, changing different perspectives makes it a little extra exciting and it's not so boring. So this is one where you actually have to know your child or your student to know if it's a good one for them. I love to do it as a read aloud. So if you were an educator and you're doing a summer class, this would be a great one to do because you can read the book and then make some of the recipes together. That's actually how I celebrated with one of my classes. When we finished the book, we actually baked one of the recipes from the book, which was a lot of fun to do together. All right. And as an extra little bonus to this week's episode... One of the moms asked me for some podcasts that kids might enjoy. So I did a bunch of research and found some podcasts that would be appropriate for kids and especially middle school kids. So here's a list of some podcasts that kids might enjoy. So I'm going to put that in the regular show notes page so that anybody can access these ones. So the first one is called Brains On, and it's all about science and technology. The second podcast is Book Club for Kids. And it is for middle and high school kids reviewing their favorite books. The next one is called Kid News, and it is nonpartisan news for kids. So it's appropriate for the younger age groups and making sure it is not overly political in one direction or the other. And then the fourth one is called Smash Boom Best. And it's all about comparing two things and defending opinions on which one they think is better. So I hope these summer reading and summer podcast lists give you some great ways to entertain kids during the summer in a way that is still educational, but very fun along the way. Don't forget, if you would like the full list of these summer reading books, just go to parnelloeducation.com forward slash summer reading, and I will put a Google Doc of all of these books that I mentioned today And like I said before, it's a Google Doc instead of just a PDF list or on the other website so that I can change it as I think of more. And especially because students that I'm reading with this summer each have their own books that they have to read for school, and some of them end up being pretty good books. So that way I can end up adding to this list as we read a little bit more this summer as well. All right, that's it for today. I hope you have a fabulous day, and I hope that you are enjoying your summer, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode. If you want to learn even more about dyslexia, check out parnelloeducation.com forward slash courses. 
See you next time.